Yeah. What did you say? You wouldn't know justice if it hit you in the flaming teeth. Now shut up and let Bo get some rest. Good evening. Who will be the next leader of the Conservative Party? Well, nominations close today. It was 1975, and the opposition were about to elect a new boss. Did that mean we were about to do away with men? No, 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 please, there are limits. <sighs> no, no, of course, just give me the chance. Just give me the chance. Well done. Scruffy old Britain had a new cleaner. Someone to put us back on our feet. I've never had this done in my life before. It's a great thrill. First time for everything. First time for everything, yes. Mrs. T, she was a first. Thank you very much, all part of the service. And so it came to pass, our country started to look ever so different. Only slowly did it dawn on us, the landscape of our lives would never be the same. It's uh, terrific, Hilda. What do you do if there's an avalanche? <laughs> Now, it does just put you right there, though, doesn't it? I've seen no to touch it since Cinerama. Oh. Sam did it all himself, you know. Well, the Muriel, anyway. Are you sure it's straight? Well, of course it's straight. I mean, you can tell by the top corners it's straight. I get the idea that lake's sloping. Straight or bent, the picture we hung on to by 1981 was optimistic enough in one way. There were twice as many weddings as divorces. Each groom, well, each bride, on the day believing an old truth that in their love they could be true to each other forever. I'm getting depressed. The church is always too that to me. Yeah. That's because you know he's giving you the once over and not liking what he sees. I wonder what Deirdre's thinking now. Whether to tell the taxi driver to run her to Manchester Airport. I know what I'd be thinking. What? Well, another ten minutes and I've got it. Despite adulteries and cruelties and irretrievable breakdowns, couples couldn't stop getting wed. On Coronation Street, though, everyone knows a wedding is not a happy ending. Because after every wedding comes the story of the marriage, over and over again. Ken Barlow has had to date 20 girlfriends, and three wives. <laughs> All right. Oh. What about that sermon there? Miley's picking a potion. Wonder where I'd be now if I hadn't met Ken. Now don't get stuck in thinking that way, otherwise you let him on the head as soon as he walks in. When he walks in. I wonder if I would have been a success in musical comedy. You know, I always wanted to be a singer. Do you know I think I might have made it if I'd had the training? I always promised myself a look at green fields. Yes, I wanted a little hotel down south, Paul Perro somewhere. <laughs> Jack, of course, wouldn't budge. You know, it strikes me the old lot of you'd be better off single. Oh, I don't think we'd swap them now. Life goes on. I was set on training in Italy. <gasps> Coronation Street. Oh, it's funny, isn't it? You marry them because you think it'll make everything different and exciting. And at the same time, you know it won't be. Never will be, either. Well, how'd you go on, then? Nothing. Now, there, 9 while 11, there was hundreds of roads looking for work. Oh, yeah, as bad as that, is it? They offered me one job to the other side of town somewhere, not exactly where it was. 8 while half past 5, packing shirts in the warehouse or something. 8 while half past 5, three quarters of an hour for dinner, and the wages... Ten pound a week without stoppages. Oh, that's woman's wealth. That or I'm sticking. Ten pounds a week, they must think I'm barmy. In Stan Ogden's time, he promised the comfort. She promised to obey. For richer, for poorer, for life. 
But these days, a wedding's a pledge of romance. And the trouble with that is it can go splat. Any particular hymn you want to sing? I did it my way, anything like that. Yes, you duck! You haven't got a light on you by any chance, have you? Oh, you're all right. I'm OK in that department. Well, there goes our marriage, my dear. Didn't it go with a bang? There was something else that got all messed up between men and women in the 1980s. When the women watched their men march back to work at the end of the miners' strike, I didn't realise then it would be for just one last season. Hey! Just look! We haven't lost, mate. We haven't lost. Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! They had lost. Pits shot. Jobs gone. Men's jobs. And they'll not come back. And what use is a man who can't bring home the wage his father did? I've only come to understand since. That was the end of working men, really. A tradition of masculinity disappeared into a hole in the ground. You're turning this into a, a nightmare for me. Oh, Just when I most need a bit of understanding, all you can do is try and force me to do what you want. Listen, no. you've got no right to kill something we made between us. And you have no right to force me to have a baby, I don't. So come on, then, why don't you want this baby? Because of what's happened in the past because of what might happen in the future. We can't say anything to change that. No. Right. Where are you going? I'm getting off. Not because I want to, or I believe in what you're saying, but I can't take much more of this, Gail. You know, you say it's a nightmare for you. At least you've got control. You can choose. Hmm? I can't. The old hard way, where she did what he said, has gone out the window. Loads of us have had to get used to walking alone. To have a life just has got so complicated. But on Coronation Street, as on other green and pleasant corners, there's always been some busy, bossy body of a woman thinking she's entitled to tidy up the sticky bits of other people's lives. She's much quicker by hand. And what do you think of Margaret Thatcher, Mrs. Shuffle? Oh, she's very happily married. That's more than you are. Drink your tea, you'll have it stone cold. Ina Sharples, always up there on a moral high horse. Well? Well what? What are you going to do with your life? And don't go saying it's none of my business. I wouldn't dream of it. I should hope not. I've lived in this street a long time. And I can remember when you could lay your hand on more yanks than Eisenhower, and I'm not having you going mad again. We're getting a bit old for that game. Thank you. Have another cup of tea. A less of the sarcasm. If I think you want talking to, I shall talk to you. And you won't shut me up by offering me another cup of tea or a piece of cake, which you haven't done yet. It's there in front of your slab cake. It's bought. <laughs> oh, that's an idea. Why don't you start baking oh. again? Oh, it's not full of seeds, is it? Why don't you try it and see? Ina was a virtuous woman, so's Deirdre, by today's standards. But to have the neck now to preach and get away with it, no chance. Have you just got back? Uh, two minutes ago, got your note. Hey, thanks for having him. Though, I don't know what he's doing here. Because otherwise, he would have been carted off to the police station and then handed over to social services. The police? What the heck you been up to? Nothing. He was caught trying to break into your flat. I haven't got a flipping key, had I? We thought it was burglars. When was it? Late last night. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll skin him. He'd no right coming back like that. And you'd no right stopping out till all hours and farming him off to some kid he can't stand. Jason's his best mate. He's not. He's a divvy. Listen, you took him in and I'm grateful. But that don't give you the right to tell me my business. It's my business. When he's found wandering about outside here at midnight. Anything could have happened to him. 
You're the last person to lecture me on being a good parent, lady. Your daughter's a flaming drug addict. Oh, dear.